for something completely different. Um, I want to do something else that was kind of quick that I can fit in in my really hectic life. So I thought I'd do something called the vintage closet. I have a closet downstairs in my basement that has a bunch of old games in it. Um, a lot of the games are from my childhood, like in the 80s, some of which are still made today. Um, but some of the games are older, like this game called Careers. This game belonged to, I think, my mom's oldest, or at least one of her older brothers. Uh, it was originally produced in 1955, and this is one of the original printings. So this is the original incarnation of this game. It was reproduced and changed a little bit over the years. Um, I think eventually they came out with something called Careers for Girls. So it wasn't misogynistic at all. Um, surprisingly, this particular game from the 50s is not that bad. And it's actually still a good game. So this box obviously is taped together because it is probably 64 years old. So the fact that we have the box at all still is pretty good, considering I actually really did play it for a long time. So let's see what's in here. Try not to cause the box to disintegrate. Um, so there is game board, which I'll show you in a second. Um, for some reason, uh, there are two rule books in here, and I don't know why, but they've always been in here. Um, everybody's favorite, paper money, right? That's the good stuff. We've got some plastic tokens. 60-year-old dice, still good. A uh, couple spare pencils in here. Let's see, what are these? Tournament Players Club. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Desert Springs. I think that's a resort in Palm Desert. It comes with these cards. These are um, experience cards and opportunity cards. I'll show them to you in a second. They're like a kind of a thicker stock, stock card kind of material. And it comes with these scorecards that are really important, and they're two different types. Uh, this type is a type that's like reusable, where you would write on it and then, see, look, write on it with my finger. See? I don't know if you can see or not. But you can actually see that, and then when you're done with the game, you lift it up, and it's gone. These don't work particularly well, <laughs> which is why you end up using all the paper ones. Which are these. Um, these are the paper ones. I will show you how they work in a minute. You can see that we have used them all uh, to the extent that the ones that were written in pencil, some of them we like would erase or cross out and then go back and reuse because we didn't have any more. Although it does say in the rule book that additional score pads may be obtained from your local dealer or directly from Parker Brothers. Uh, they cost 10 cents each or six for 50 cents. I do wonder if uh, you could still get those or not. Um, in any case, someone on Board Game Geek posted a file that has the score sheet so you could print out at home if you wanted to play the game. So here is our game board for careers. And the goal of the game is going to differ for each person. Let me see if I can find a reasonable sheet that isn't too hard to read. So everyone gets one of these sheets, and the goal is to get 60 points total um, out of a combination of money, fame, and happiness. But at the beginning of the game, you get to choose what total you're going for. So in this case, whoever was playing was going for 50,000 in money, five fame stars, and five happiness hearts, which equals 60. But you could do any combination you want. You can do 45, 15, 30, 15, 15. You could do um, 20, 20, 20. It doesn't matter. Um, but it can affect then the way you play the game, which I think is fairly forward thinking for the time that this game came out. And whatever you make your goal for the game, whatever this is, you write it down and you fold this and then it's a secret and no one else knows what you're going for in the game. So you are going to know that you want 40,000 in cash 
10 fame stars and 10 happiness hearts, but no one else does. So it is roll and move, but it is a slightly better roll and move than one like you, you might think about like uh, Monopoly or something like that. The reason for that being uh, you can get through the course of the game experience cards. Mostly you get experience cards by going through uh, different career tracks. Um, career tracks are these things where you can get, if you land on one of these spaces, you can go up into it and collect the different things and have different things happen to you. And when you finished it, you get experience. Um, experience cards give you a choice of moving a certain number of squares instead of rolling the dice. This is really important. Again, kind of ahead of its time. Um, these are really most useful when you're in the career tracks. When you're moving around the outside of the board, you roll two dice. But when you're in one of the career tracks, you only roll one die. So being able to choose, uh, instead of rolling a die, move two spaces, move one space, in order to land on a space that will help you further your particular goal for the game, that's really helpful. But the different career tracks you can go through are farming, you can go to college and get a degree, join big business, go to sea, run for office politics, um, enter Hollywood, go prospecting, that's uranium prospecting, and an expedition to the moon. The most profitable, I think, is usually uranium. You don't get much from going to sea, but you have a chance to get a lot of hearts or happiness. In the politician track, you can get lots of fame. So when you're playing the game, you kind of look and see which careers might net you the most um, points that you need for your particular goal. And you'll see all around the board, there are these spaces called opportunity knocks. Um, op they will give you an opportunity card. Opportunity cards, um, that's not a good one. Uh, will let you jump directly to a career to start it. Opportunity to enter politics. Um, and the, all of the uh, career spaces have a prerequisite for being able to get in. Like going to college, you need to have money for tuition. Uh, if you join big business, you have to have either a college degree, so you would have had to completed this, or um, a $500 employment fee, or have done it before. So each of them has different requirements in order to enter that career. So you could have an opportunity to enter politics with normal requirements. Here's a special opportunity to join the uranium expedition because of all your great skill as a mountain climber, all expenses are paid. So these are all chances to hop to those particular, oops, those particular careers. And you'll notice at the bottom it says may save or sell. During the game, on either your turn or one of your opponent's turns, you can make deals. If you really want to go to Hollywood and someone else has a Hollywood opportunity knock, so you can make some deals, either with cash or with experience cards. Um, however you want to make a deal, it is permitted in this game. And of course there are other random, um, well, some of which would be kind of familiar looking spaces on the board. Pay taxes, uh, pay food bills, um, places where you can get hearts, you can get cash, you can get um, stars. There's also a park bench, which is where you can end up if uh, another player lands on your same spot and chooses to bump you. Uh, alternatively, you could strike a deal with them. If you're on a spot and somebody lands on it and they want to bump you to the park bench, you can be like, hey, what if I give you 500 bucks instead? So that's the kind of stuff you can do in this game. I'll show you. Um, the really probably the only like I guess you could call it dated reference or dated misogyny on this board or in this game would be this spot shopping spree zoom in zoom it there focus okay um, shopping spree throw one die to find out what your wife just spent on shopping spree pay number thrown times 10% of your cash on hand for 1955, that is not bad. That that is pretty much the worst thing on the board. Because <laughs> um, actually, they're a little bit progressive in that, um, well, not pro I wouldn't say progressive, but they at least considered it. Um, when you enter Hollywood, one of the things you can land on is marry foreign prince slash princess. So at least it hits both genders on that part of the board. 
let's look at, for instance, Hollywood. Let's look at what it's like to go through Hollywood. So um, to enter Hollywood, you either have to have $1,000 for new clothes, you know, which maybe you got to the shopping spree, I don't know, um, or movie experience, meaning you've been through this before. Um, if you pose for a calendar, you score two stars. If you have a date with a star, you draw an experience card, which could then be used to help you move um, through the track. The director likes you. Draw two opportunities. Marry a foreign prince or princess. TV contract increases your salary up to $1,000. Now, your salary. Your salary level will be shown on your sheet, and that's the amount you get when you cross the payday spot on the board. Um, at, the, at the top where you have money, that's not your salary. That's total money that you have on hand. So your salary, of course, the higher your salary goes, every time you pass payday, the more you're gonna get to go towards this number. So in, you know, if you had $3,000 salary and you land on this face, then you would erase this or cross it out and put a check next to 4,000. Next time you crow past payday, you get 4,000. Here we go, fan mail drops off slightly, cut salary by half. Oh no, so um, that 4,000 we just went up to would go down to two. Uh, let's see, scandal, score 10 stars but lose all your happiness. That would be bad unless you're not trying to get happiness, which can happen. You could choose, let's say you chose $30,000 in cash and 30 fame stars and zero happiness, then that's fine. Reach stardom, salary up $1,000 times one throw of the die. So that could go up to as much as $6,000, that would be big. Um, win an Oscar, score 12 stars. And then once you exit it, you would collect experience, meaning you pick up an experience card. It also means the next time you go around or land on this space, you could go enter Hollywood for free. Once you've been through any career three total times, you can choose uh, to retire, which means you can go to the Florida vacation space whenever you want instead of taking a turn, instead of rolling the dice and moving. In Florida vacation, you score four hearts when you land here and two hearts each time you stay. And you can stay on throws of seven or less, but you may leave on any throw. So if you're on that space, you roll a five, you can choose to stay or go. You roll an 11 and you have to move. And you can't use the Florida vacation to skip the penalty of park bench or hospital, which is where you can land up and that's a, that's a penalty where you have to pay half your salary before you can go on any farther. So the end of the game happens once someone has reached their cash number their fame number and their heart number, and then that person wins the game. It actually holds up fairly well for being quite such an old game. It's good, it's interesting. I do not remember how long it takes to play. Obviously that is gonna depend on some luck. If someone gets real lucky, the game's shorter. Nobody's lucky, the game is longer. So I can't tell you a time limit because I don't remember. So this is the game Careers, uh, taken out of my vintage closet. I might do one of these every now and then, just to do something quick. If you find that interesting, great. If not, um, hopefully I will make some other videos that would be more interesting for you. Doesn't matter. It's all games, it's all fun. Uh, thanks for visiting the Dragon Table. Hopefully I'll see you next time.